Welcome to Rooster Radio, a broadcast dedicated to supporting and promoting local artists in the Gaston County and surrounding areas. Yeah, that, I mean, that, plus it was a very long day, plus yeah. I had that situation with the other guy yeah. that had me all kind of ruffled my feathers. Yeah. And somebody pissed me off yesterday, and <laughs> I'm not going to blast anybody. <laughs> but let's just say there's one place around here that's no longer getting my support. There was a lot of emotions yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it was an emotional day. Plus, we had a market and a show. You know, there were some competing shows, too, that kind of kept our crowd from being as big when as When I got right. home, I found out there were nine other local things going on in the county. Well, it doesn't, <laughs> I mean, there's there's always going to be something else yeah. to do. Like, like oh, that's yeah. that's not a good excuse as to why yeah. no one's here. Like, like, I, like, you want to, your knee-jerk reaction is be like, oh, well, this is going on here and this is going on there. But the, the fact of the matter is that's that's not why people aren't here. People aren't here because they don't want to be here yet. You got to give them a reason to want to be here. That's why, you know, if we were yeah. deep frying food, they'd be lining out the door. <laughs> yeah. maybe, Welcome maybe to Gastonia. Fish. <laughs> a fish fry. Get a or county something. fair booth out here in the front. <laughs> I'm telling you, the county fair restaurant, it's a million dollar idea. Yeah. Just serve county fair food. I mean, we, grilled corn on the cob, deep fried. All a that bucket stuff. of fried pickles. Yeah. I mean, turkey legs, barbecue, donuts. Yeah. And some Pepto Bismol to go with it. Right. Yeah. yeah at the cat, make it one of the places where you got to pay at the register when you're done, and then have like Pepto and Imodium and all that <laughs> shit lined up by the register with the little uh, with the little uh, mint packs from the uh, Shriners Club. Yep. Yeah, you know what? That's not bad. You're gonna something about this. them mints. Though. Those those Shriners Club mints. You remember those things? Those things are those things are so much better than anything you get in a store. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I don't. Or, I don't know those ones that you that you used to be able to find at weddings, but now weddings are a full catered meal. But like you know, the nineties, the eighties, buttery, yeah, soft. yeah, a little butter. Yeah, mints. they melt in your mouth. <coughs> yeah. oh, those are so good. Yeah, <clears throat> they are. I'm glad you said that. They're really good. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking to Mr. Robert Kellogg. Say hello, Robert. Hey, everyone. Um, so if you, you should know who Robert is if you live in his community. If you don't, Robert is a city council member here in Gastonia. Is it Ward Four? Uh, Ward, Ward one. one. Ward one. Sorry, yeah. Ward one. And um, Robert is running for mayor this year. So, uh, but that's not why we're here. Uh, the reason I've asked, asked Robert on is because he's one of the biggest community advocates that we have here in Gastonia. Um, not just Gaston County, specifically Gastonia. He is a champion of this city. And he, in the face of <laughs> what seemingly is just nonstop ridicule and, and nonstop, you know, you, I don't know, what's the right word for the shit you catch from people? I think you said it, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> the, man, the man just stays positive and stays on track, and that's why I respect you so much, is that you very rarely deter off of that positive, like, informational kind of a, approach. You know, trying to do the best you can with the tools you have at your disposal. You know, everybody has an opinion on how this should go or how that should go or where your tax dollars should be spent. Right. But the truth of the matter is we have tools at our disposal, and we are limited to those tools. We can't make new ones. We can try, which is what we're doing with some of the things that are happening in downtown, trying to you know, cast a wider net to, to, to gain more resources. And, you know, whatever anyone has to say about any of that, everyone's got an opinion, but none of you are doing anything about it, but Robert is. And my first question is, why Gastonia? Because you're not a native. You're, you're, you're not originally from here. Why Gastonia? I'm not a native. And, and, you know, people bring it up to me all the time and as, like, it's a negative. I think it's a freaking positive <laughs> to have somebody who's be. not from here yeah. um, to choose to live here because you see the, the opportunity here. And because you understand that it's a, it's like a diamond in the rough. It's like a, a canvas that hasn't been painted yet, and it could be whatever we want it to be. But we we've got to we've got to move beyond um, what we what we know or what we've been taught or what we've been told the last several decades or even generations. It, 
Gastonia has the opportunity to to be a place where people can not only survive but but thrive. You know, I don't know about anybody else, but it's it's kind of tiring to see people just hanging on, and other places moving forward and and becoming successful and being in the in the spotlight. I think it's time for Gastonia to take it up a notch, and I think we can. Um, but I'm here because I, you know this city has been very gracious to me, very welcoming, in spite of some of the social media posts. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think um, I think we sometimes listen to all of that chatter and all of that negativity, and we think it's everybody. It's not everybody. It, it's not. I mean, there are a lot of good people here who are invested in this city and want to see good things happen and want to help people and, and just want to move forward. And I think what I've learned in the last couple of years is, is to try to tune that out as best as I can, the negativity. It doesn't mean you don't learn from some of it because, you know, there may be some truth in some of it. But if all you concentrate on is that negativity, you're never going to move forward. It's the squeaky wheel versus silent majority argument, mm -hmm. you know. The squeaky wheel always get you know the loudest you know, that's kind of how we got into the social disarray that we've been in since you know 2016 is is the we're letting the people with the loudest voices who are the minority for the most part get their way while the rest of us who are sensible level-headed reasonable people we're too busy working and producing and and putting good into the world to sit there and just belly gripe about everything yeah. and that's and that's where the disconnect happens because if you're if you're if you're using social media as your barometer for where mm -hmm. we are as a community then you're not getting a of three a holistic you're not getting a holistic view of where people really are yeah. you know it's in the con it's in the one-on-one -on -one conversations that you have with people in the community those are you know that's where you get the real facts you know because you know think about it you know if you're if you've got the time to sit there and, and just constantly shit on stuff on social media you're not doing anything productive. I don't know about you, but I'm way too busy to sit there and, and, and comment on every post and critique every decision that's been made. You know, and, and look, you know, if you really feel that strongly about it, show up to the city council meeting and sign up to speak, right? right. That's how you really get it done, right? Yep, absolutely. But I don't want to you know, harp too much on negative. I, I just want to make the point that, hey, if you're that upset about it, put forth some effort and do something. And, and again, that's, it goes back to why I respect what you do here in the community. Now, <clears throat> pardon me, I apologize for that. You know, I asked you why Gastonia. Um, I mean, do you want to talk about where you're from and how you got here? Sure. Uh, so uh, I'm from upstate New York, a really small town. It, it's probably the size of, I don't even think it's as big as Belmont. So it's a, it's a smaller community. And, um, I, you know, I grew up in, in poverty. I mean, really uh, poverty. I mean, uh, some people say they know what poverty is, but until you've had pancakes four or five nights in a row because that's all your parents can can afford, um, that's, you know, that's poverty. And, you know, See, I, I didn't I know it was poverty. That. It was breakfast for dinner. <laughs> that, that's what my it, parents it called it, breakfast for dinner. It was, and, and, you and know, it was I still, the easiest way I to still send like something them. out. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. Um, uh, but I, I even struggled in my 20s and even 30s. You know, I was working in retail management but not making enough money and finally got to the point where I was – on the verge of homelessness, you know they were uh, they were looking for my car, and I had to hide it in a in a hotel parking lot because you can't you know if somebody's looking to repossess your car, you, you don't put it in your driveway. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I had to hide it and then walk home at night. And I said, this is no way to live. I, I mean, there's got to be something out there that's better than than and what's you're happening. You're still in upstate New York. Right, upstate New York. Um, and then my sister had moved down to North Carolina the year before, and finally she reached out to me and said. You know, j just come down here. Come down here. I promise you things are going to be better. Um, long story short, I listened to her, <laughs> which was some of the, you know, the best thing I ever did. And things are better. You know, and I think the lesson is sometimes you have to take a chance. And that's why I, I feel kind of like I gravitate towards Gastonia because our history is people who have taken chances, people that came here looking for something better. And not everybody succeeded. But they came here in search of a better life. Um, even the mill towns. I mean, all of that history, uh, it, it's part of who we are. And yeah, I feel take, comfortable if here. If you take the time to get to know a little bit about the history of, of Gastonia and Gaston County as a whole, you know, early 1900s, 
you know, this town developed by a bunch of risk takers, a bunch mm -hmm. of guys who yep. saw that the Catawba River ran through here. Textiles was a booming industry, and you know, that's why it's called the Spindle City because there were so many textile mills. And they these these men made fortunes. You know, they created a structure of society that can be critiqued, and that's a conversation for another podcast. But <laughs> right. you know, that's what this town was built on. That's how this town got money, and then. You know, in the mid 1900s, as industrialization, you know, streamlined a lot of these processes, more and more people lost their jobs, and it has been over 50 years. We're probably closer to 60 years now that Gaston, Gastonia specifically has just been a below average, you know, salary kind of a town. You know, the, you know, are, are, are your what's the word I'm looking for? Like your your average income. Right. Your average income is low in Gastonia, which is why. You know, house prices are cheaper than everywhere else around Charlotte. It's why property houses are cheaper. And like right now, a lot of people are griping about the the uh, increase in um, property tax. And nobody wants to pay more taxes. The truth is, we have been at the bottom of the barrel for a very long time in the state in terms yeah. of uh, property taxes. And they are, and they're, we're still not even close to the quote unquote norm. And the thing that hasn't caught up are salaries. Yep. Wages have not caught up, yeah. and uh, that's you know, and that's what people are really upset about. That's that's what right. people are really upset about is that th there's not a lot of places to make a lot of money here, and we're trying to change that by bringing all kinds of cool things to to this town. And you know, you're seeing it happen in Belmont and now Mount Holly, and things are slowly making their way down here, and um, it takes risk takers. You know, like, like Walmart's not going to be your savior, despite no. the you know, despite what you might believe. Walmart's not saving any communities. It's 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 de it's dilapidating your community's ability to be self-sufficient. Yeah. Is is what is what big box stores do. Yeah. It's what corporations do, and they've gotten so good at it that some places have been left with no other choice. Mm -hmm. So how do we fix it? <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, a loaded question. Hey, you just it all out there, and it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it has to start with the community believing that we deserve better. And I think sometimes, you know, individually and also collectively, we may not always think we deserve it. Um, and, and that's, again, feeding into that negative attitude and all those stereotypes and, and generation after generation of saying, well, it's always been this way in Gastonia and, and we, we allow Charlotte to make fun of us and everybody else to shape our narrative. But I think it's going to take some guts a and for people to say a shift of perspective. Absolutely. And just say, look, we're not going to do it like this anymore. We, we are proud of who we are. We're proud of this city. We're going to make something happen. And I think that's part of it, but I think it's also investing in our small businesses and our entrepreneurs. Um, and that gets to kind of what you were saying about Walmart. Nothing against Walmart, and we need those stores, but we really need a live and a thriving downtown and small businesses all across the, the city. And once you see that start to rise, I think you'll see other parts coming together. And we recently proved that it's possible when we did the bar, bar crawl a few mm -hmm. weeks back. You know, we proved that we can have hundreds of people in downtown and there's enough to go around for everybody. And we can make that a weekly thing. You know, now for now, I'm speaking from a bar owner perspective, right? right? What about the people that say, "Oh, that's what we need more bars." People that are anti nightlife and anti drinking. What about them? Well, we have what we have a huge, you know, multi million dollar sports facility at our disposal, and it's unfortunate that the management of that of that company has not been as as engaging in the community right. as we would like. But there's still an opportunity there. And, you know, there's the pavilion uh, that the Rotary does all kinds of good stuff. There's always, you know, I get there's an email every month. something going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get an email yes. every month from the city telling me what's going on in downtown. Yep. You know, it's, you know, people have to just be willing to, to get out of the house and, and go participate in these things and support these people. Because it's not just bars. It's not just restaurants. It's all kinds of people trying to do good things in the community. And you got to get out and, and participate. And, and again, the, the shift of perspective, I do believe that's part of it. I agree with you. That's part of, yep. part of it. There but, were, um, yep. there were the, the, the vendors that were out at the bar called, they benefited so well from that. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. those, are, those are micro businesses. Right. Those, and, and everybody, like the two we had out here, the one that was at uh, CityCade and Alec Cavendish, they all did pretty well. The one down at CityCade almost sold out of her stuff. 
She had very little stuff to take home. Yeah, it's a testament it's a, it's to, nice. to, to the power of what we can do when we all work together. And, and that's one of the other things I, I really respect about your approach is you're always trying to put people together. So talk to me a little bit about your experience as a city council member, right? So this mm -hmm. is, are you on your third term? This is, right, this is my third. You're on your third yep. term. So you, you've been on city council for a while. You've had the opportunity to work with several different people in that role. Go for a minute. Tell me what you've been able to accomplish as a city council member, and then tell me what you're still struggling to get done. So the, you know, the first year is really kind of getting used to what that all means. The process. You know, the process, yeah, and, and there really is a learning curve. Um, so I think anybody that goes into any um, elected role, there's a, l a little bit of a learning curve. But immediately what I tried to do was to see what some of the challenges were in our, in our city. And going back to, I think it was 2016, immediately it was the opioid um, addiction crisis, which had just started to come into to being, and people were starting to talk about it, and Gaskin County was fifth in the state for overdose deaths. Jesus Christ. Think about that. I Our county was, was fifth, high. fifth. And we were just starting to hear about that, and it was like, this is, <laughs> we don't want to be fifth for that. Um, so I, I began to bring people together, reached out to our attorney general. We had, um, we had some informational town halls. And what I really appreciated about that whole process was that our attorney general uh, from North Carolina came here, listened not only to law enforcement and to elected officials, but then went to Phoenix counseling and spent an hour and a half listening to individuals who are in recovery and people who are actually have been there and are finding their way out of um, addiction. And that, to me, spoke volumes of what the process ought to be. So I you know, I, I just try to do that wherever I go, whatever I do, bring people together. And I think there's a real hunger for information. And not just information, but pointing people to possible solutions and resources. And, and we don't do that in government. You know, we, we, we just kind of sit behind our, our dais, you know, up there on the stage and we do what we do, but we somehow forgot that our role is to be out there in the community, is to be connecting people, is to help facilitate conversations, is to help bring about solutions and not just talk about things. So, you know, I could go on and on, but that's really what I've done and that's what I do and that's what I enjoy doing. So you focus more on, on, you know, helping people that, that need help, that want help. I think there's a, yeah. that distinction needs to be made. I mean, I, I've witnessed myself yeah. in my personal life enough people that, that, that I know that have struggled with addiction and homelessness issues. And I've watched, I, you know, one of my very best friends, my very best friend was homeless at one point in his life and found his way mm. out of it. You know, I've watched addicts go to waste, and I've watched addicts scratch and claw their way out of that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And the difference between the people that get out and the people that don't is there's a, a natural, there's a desire to want better. What do you say to the person that just, it's just not getting through, like they just have given up? Like, so I think you're on the right track. And, I, you know, there is a a lot of people who are saying to local government and probably state and national government, do something. You, you got to solve this problem. Well, first of all, be careful what you ask for, because when government begins to do something, they're going to do it their way and they're going to do it. The, right, it's always it expensive. Um, but we have to go back to personal responsibility and accountability. And I, I work in, you know, I work in the healthcare field. I work with individuals who are experiencing homelessness. If somebody wants help, then we ought to be able to point them and get them the help they need. But to your point, if somebody's not at that point yet, this is going to sound harsh, but with limited resources and limited ways for government, and I'm not talking about the private sector, but government, there's only so much government can do. Um, That's the point I'm making. That, that is exactly the point I made there. Like, there's a line. Mm -hmm. There's a line, and, and some people have to get to that line and be willing to cross it to get better, and some people just aren't. So, no. you know, <clears throat> there's a myriad of reasons why people can find themselves in addiction or homelessness situations. You know, it could be choices that you've made. You know, 
It could be, you know, an environment that you grew up in. It could be someone in your life that's that's sucking you into a lifestyle that, you know, you, it, we talked about this a little bit on the Hope United episode about mm -hmm. with domestic violence, how, you you know, one, one day you're falling head over heels in love with somebody. Six months later, you're trapped in a bedroom and can't leave the mm -hmm. house. You know, the, the, it, it, it can happen that quick. And uh, it's when you find yourself in those situations, it just seems like no matter what you do, that hole gets deeper and deeper. But the right. fact is there are resources there, and it takes – People like you, like this show, this platform that we have to get those word out that there's there. So let's move on to something more positive. Let's talk about development here in the town. You know, you've been you've been on your third term. You've had a hand in getting some of the things going down. I want you to take a minute and talk about what you've seen since the time you became a city councilman to now. What growth have you seen? Because you got in 2016, is that right? Uh, 2015. 2015 was your first. So that's eight years now you've been in office. What's new in the last eight years? Wow. What? <laughs> yeah, I, well, that's there, my point. There is. <laughs> and, and I'm glad you asked that because, uh, you know, I think sometimes we, you know, we do our daily thing and we go to work and we're living our lives and we don't always take the time to look back five or ten years ago and see what it was like mm -hmm. and what it's like now. So, yeah, there's a lot of challenges. You know, we're not perfect. The downtown needs some uh, some life and, and additional revitalization, but there's a heck of a lot of good things going on. And I, I'm so proud that I advocated for Fuse and stood up for that and was part of that original council that decided to purchase that property. Mm -hmm. It was not easy. People told us we shouldn't do it. They said we were silly. That's not what we should be doing. But we took a chance and did something to try to revitalize a part of the town that that nobody really thought had it was any an life in it. Nobody cared about that no. part of the town. No, I mean no, it was a half burnt down. You traveled You looked yep. over there and you just kept going wherever yep. you were going. Yep, a half burnt down hotel, um, a Sears building that had nothing but asbestos in it and rodents and all kinds of just dilapidated buildings. And I don't know how anybody could say today that things are not better where Fuse is. It doesn't mean that the some of the things happening there are perfect, but that's, you know, the ups and downs of business. That's not, um, that is not what economic development about, is about. It's, about. it's about investing in your community and seeing the results of that. Um, I do worry sometimes that some of the energy has shifted from downtown to Fuse, and I think Fuse should be bringing everybody together so there shouldn't be like one pocket here and another pocket here, but it should be one large, <laughs> one large I, pocket I, I totally of, of life. See, I totally see that because yeah. it's almost like it just at a certain point it just cuts off and yep. it's like it's well, there's like this thing. one little thing that that stands in between Fuse and 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 the rest of downtown that that just seems to repel people, and you know just not much we can do about it, but right. we can just keep building, we can keep building around because yeah. things are kind of making their way towards each they, other. They are, yeah. and it's yeah, a process. It's, I mean, we're we're one of them. You know, since you since you've been in office, we have a brewery. There's another brewery about to open up. We, you yep. know, the hotel has opened. You know, we've opened. Uh, there's a you know, city Kate is open. Yeah, absolutely. You, there's more shops in downtown. There's there's even a convenience store in downtown. Did you know that we have a convenience store right on the corner of South and Main? We have a convenience store. We have a, a, a cat coffee shop. We've got several restaurants. Yeah, there's there's a lot there's, there's a lot. lot going on. I mean, you're right. We still need more work. Yep. You know, we got ways to go, which means there's more opportunity. And you know, I just I would like to see people, um, you know. I see this. This happens probably once a week. We'll have somebody come here to a, for a show, and they'll be from Mount Holly or Stanley or Belmont or Shelby or even Charlotte. Mm -hmm. And there's this look of astonishment in their eyes mm -hmm. because before they came here, they went and had a beer at, at the brewery, and then they went and had dinner right. at one of the restaurants. And they come here, and they're like, this place is great. I never knew Gastonia had all this. Like, I hear that all the time. <laughs> Like once they yeah. get here, they're like, I didn't know it was like this, and I think it's it's just going to take time to keep building that. Like you said, there was a stigma for a long time, and you know, there's a lot of people that aren't going to let that go, and that's fine. You know, those people can stay at home and play their video games or whatever the fuck it is they do. You know, we're 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 interested in positive people. We want to grow the community. That's why we're down here, and I appreciate yeah. your advocacy on all of it. You know, Robert, you know, was. 
he's been instrumental in, in getting a lot of things done around here. He helped me, you know, Robert and I met, I, you know, I got, I, I, was, I got assigned to you through, um, you know, the, the civic engagement training that I, that I received through uh, Gaston Together, which is a nonprofit organization that's basically focusing on bringing Gaston Together and making things mm -hmm. better around here. And one of the tasks, one of the things we were tasked with during that, that training was um, writing a story, our vision of Gaston County 5, 10, and 15 years from now. Like where should where where do we want to be 15 years from now, and what are the steps we have to take to get there? And collectively, collectively, there were like 30 of us in this class, mm -hmm. or close to 30 of us. And collectively, we were tasked to, to write this story. Like, and then we, I mean, we had these big, huge notepads. We we broke it down by sectors, what needed to happen here and there, and ultimately, what that did was it created this you know two-page story that we wrote about. And we wrote two versions. We wrote the version that this is what would happen if we do these things, and this is what will happen if we don't. And um, from that experience, I was inspired to open this. Like, I, I, it gave me the confidence to, to pull the trigger on, on the rooster. Um, that would, this would not have happened had I not received that training. And that's how we met. And, um, and I'm grateful for that. So, so Robert's kind of been someone that I've been able to talk to, bounce ideas off of. He's pointed me in the right direction for a few things. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. So now my question to you is, where do you see, want to see Gastonia in 10 to 15 years from now? So, Your vision. Th yeah, there, there's a, uh, several areas that I, I think we could really improve on. And I'm not going to go real deep into them, but first is really getting in touch with our our young people. And you know, if we look at some of the violent crime and, and things that the bad things we see happening in our city as far as crime, it, it's usually our young people. Mm -hmm. And you know, we don't want to advertise that. First of all, Gastonia is a safe place. It's safe. I mean, there is no more and no less crime here than than any other city our size. But we do have to recognize that some of the violent crime that takes place is with our young people. So we, we need to be kind of proactive with that. We need to get in touch with our young people. We need to understand what's going on with them. That's do you know any leading. kids in middle school? <laughs> they're, they're cunts. The, they're, 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 <laughs> they're cunts, man. The middle cunts school kids on. are the worst. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to bring some they levity are, to They, are, they are the worst and they are the best yeah. all at the same yeah, yeah. time uh, because they keep it as real as real can be. I was going to say they'll tell you the way it is, and sometimes you're like, wow, you're, you're right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. So, so what, what, I mean, so you want to start with the youth by engaging the youth. I, I think that's critical because if we look at crime statistics, they don't just happen. Like if, if crime goes up, it just doesn't happen that day that it's gone up. It's what happened a couple of years ago that leads to those statistics going up. So what I want to see happen is that we, we nip this in the bud. We, we begin to deal with this at the, where it's starting instead of having to always deal with it at the the end result which is expensive which involves law enforcement needing additional training and services and and tools and instead of right and, and, and ab absolutely the whole process and dhhs and all of that that's that is a overwhelming so how do you make process. people care enough about their kids to raise them better well that's not government's responsibility <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Is, that, that's my right, point, right. that there's a certain level of personal responsibility that we have there to is. take for our, for our community. There is. I think what we can offer is, you know, we have all of these community resource centers throughout our city. You know, Highland and Phillips Center, and they're, they're all over United the city. United Way, Boys yes. and Girls Club, yeah, absolutely. YMCA. And, you know, it's great that we, you know, that we have the activities there that we have, and, and those need to continue. But we need to begin to think outside the box as well. What are we doing to kind of help people with anger management control and building self-esteem and understanding conflict resolution? And the world is not always going to go your way. And if it doesn't go your way, how are you going to respond? Yeah. Right. And those are the type of things that we, be, we should also be offering as far as recreation and activities. We can do both. But I think if we use those centers and have a real So incorporating approach, mental health... Um, uh, mental health education into these right. programs and communication skills and is that something that Contegra is is working on so i think they're really looking at going into the schools um this is more about into our community centers and okay. how that would look as far as what we do um highland has already started that they they had a grant where 
they were given some money to kind of use um, special speakers and programming and different things to bring that community a little closer together and to reach out to their young people. So I think if we take that model, which is already started there, and just put it in all the other um, I'm seeing firsthand the improvements in the Highland community. Yes. Now, now yeah. and you've worked with Charles Odom on some yep. of that, right? Shout out to Charles Odom. He's, yeah. he's another one that I met, you know, through some of this leadership training stuff who became, yep. a, he was inspired to become a city council member after some of the stuff that we did together. Right. And, uh, and he's been a Highland advocate for a long time. And I'm, I mean, it's really nice because I drive by it every day to get here. And you're seeing the improvements in the homes and the community center and yep. and the just everything that's going on and that I'm all for it. Yeah, you I mean yep. look, fact of the matter is when you've got a nicer place to live, you feel better, you're more proud of it, you want to take better care of it. You know, it's hard to get motivated to do good when everything around you is ugly. Yeah. You you're know right. what I'm saying? Mm. Yep. All right, let's move on to some more fun stuff. You want to do that? Cool, cool. The all fun right. stuff. Yeah, that sounds so, good. So, so you're now <laughs> all right, now, enough with the with the heavy stuff. So now that you are, uh, you know, so now that you are a Gastonian, bona fide, where's the best liver mush? Oh gosh, this is gonna put me <laughs> on the spot. And do you like it? I don't like liver liver mush. What? I've tried. I've Back tried. Back to New York. I know. I, know. <laughs> I do like. I, I like Sun Drop. Actually, cherry lemon Sun Drop is now my favorite soda, but. And that's probably why I've gained 20 pounds. All right, so I'll pose it this way. Best breakfast sandwich? Um, bacon, egg, and cheese on, Where? on sourdough. Um, Tony's has a good one. Um, okay, CDA was the right answer. I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I say Tony's because our office is right across the street now from Tony's. All right, best that's barbecue? Um, oh, let's see. Dude. I like that's Kyle Fletcher's, dangerous. and Kyle I'm going to get people in trouble here because I'm not naming them all, but they're all good, but I like Kyle Fletcher's. Kyle Fletcher's, all right. <laughs> Best pizza in town. I, you know what? I'm going to say Cavendish because I had never really had their pizza until the... You did get some at the bar crawl? Right, I which, did. Which I did. did you get? Um, it was um, like a meat, some kind of meat extravaganza. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, my I husband got that. Called. I was like... That was too much meat for me. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it, they have really good pizza. They, they do have it. really good pizza. It's good. Uh, best tacos. Hmm. That's another loaded question. That's like barbecue. It, it is. It, I'm going to say the food trucks, and it's not one in particular. But if you want real authentic tacos, the food the food trucks are where the, where you should mm -hmm. go. I'm going to shout out Viva Tecky because they, Viva Tecky has a food truck style. They, they have street tacos on their yep. menu, and they're very very good. They are. Um, all right. Um, Where's the best uh, walking trail? Which which park's got the best walking trail? I like Rankin Lake, but I, there's something about you know walking around that lake and a the tranquil, sun. Tranquility it tranquility. It is. Even though you hear the um, the occasional skeet, <laughs> you know the the firing range off in the distance, I, I find it really relaxing and I, it motivates me. All right, if uh, you were talking to somebody that's not from here, that's coming here to visit, they're coming, let's say they're coming to one of our festivals and they're staying at one of the hotels and they're, they've got an extra day here and they want to, the, where's the best tourist destination in town? Where, where would you send them to spend uh, half a day? So, you know, first day I would encourage them to come to our downtown, enjoy some of the, the things that are here. Also the Shield Museum, which... I, I think a lot of people still don't understand how cool of a place the Shield is. Um, and if you like the outdoors, I mean, uh, all of our parks, our walking trails, Crowder's Mountain is right there. there um, but yeah, there's so much here that we don't always promote ourselves. Um, but there, there's a lot to do. The tourism department for the county does a really good job of promoting all the awesome stuff. And that's yep. and tour. And as far as tourism goes, that is more of a county. Um, uh, question than it is a city question yeah. because you know Crowder's Mountain State Park is kind of in Gastonia but it's kind of not like, we're, we're going to claim yeah. it even though it's, it's sort of yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you can go into like Cramerton and then right. go kayaking on the South Fork mm -hmm. you know, there's 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 so much to do here you know there's there's plenty of farms out here you can go to Limeburgers yep. Farm and this is the time of year to check out Limeburgers Farm you can go to hit their pumpkin patch take the hayride right. do all that stuff it's really a regional we're a regional destination and it's a, it, in it, Limeburgers is incredibly yep. affordable too correct they are. very very yeah that's where we get our I don't buy them pumpkins at the grocery store oh yeah no mm -hmm. screw that um which neighborhood's got the most opportunity hmm I would think uh, boy that, that's really tough to say because every neighborhood has their 
kind of their own story and their own niche, you know, their own thing happening. Um, I, I think the the further west you go in Gastonia, the more opportunity there is for maybe a small business person, somebody who wants to open something up on the cutting edge. Um, and maybe it might not be quite as expensive because you're further out. Um, so I think West Gastonia has the some of the uh, some more opportunities that they could really tap into. I forgot one best of question. Who's got the best entertainment? <laughs> you do. <laughs> the rooster. Yeah, tell them. <laughs> the rooster. <laughs> <laughs> you really do. And what I will say about the space, first of all, if, if I don't know if you know if people here really have gone to Asheville or Greenville or any of those other, you know, cities that we tend to think of as being very um, hip, robust, robust, yeah. hip. This venue reminds me of Greenville or Asheville, and it's a, a welcoming space. It's fun. It's kind of intimate. You know, it's not, not so large that you're going to get lost, but mm -hmm. you, you can see people across the room, and you've got the live entertainment. That is really taking a, a, a lesson from some of those other cities that have been on the cutting edge, but then also making it your own. So it's a really cool space. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. You're welcome. <laughs> and I mean that. <laughs> Thank you. I know. Yeah, and Rob, Robert's been here a few times, and I appreciate the support. I really do. Um, you know, if truth be told, I would like to see more people come out. You know, there, there's a lot of challenges in doing what we do, you know, you, I knew from day one that this was going to be hard. Like, I, I don't ever want to come off like I'm bitching or complaining or whining or anything like that. It is frustrating, though. It's very, very frustrating because, like, you know, this just this weekend, you know, we had two back-to-back -back great shows, mm -hmm. and I was disappointed with the turnout for both of them because I felt like more people should be here for these shows. Like, what's happening in front of us right now is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's awesome. And more people should be here because this is a smaller, more intimate venue, but it's big enough to feel empty. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like when there's only 20 people here. Yeah. You know, I, you know, my, my goal is to have, you know, between 50 and 100 people here every night for every show we do. If we do that, then we'll be golden. And uh, I don't know what's keeping people from coming to more shows. Um, I'm trying every day to, to solve that puzzle. And when I figure that formula out, I ain't telling none of y'all motherfuckers. I'm keeping that shit to myself. <laughs> do, do you think, though, oh that with the, with the 100 plus families, individuals that will be here shortly with the, with I the really apartments, hope it I, I hope that's going to be added foot. I, I foot hope traffic. we hang in here long enough to see it. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that play. I'm hoping that the management will allow me to host some sort of welcome to the neighborhood event for them, maybe a private party for the first, you know, people that move in there. We'll bring in some free entertainment. We'll feed them. You know, I'm hoping that they, I've tried that with um, I've tried it with Larry Mill and I've tried it with Trenton Mill. The Trenton Mill management were into it, but nobody wanted to come. And Loray, I can't get their management company to even entertain, mm. like, setting it up, which is, that's regretful. It's yeah. like, you're here, I'm here, you, your people can walk here, let me do something nice for them. And they just, right. you know, I'm not asking for their emails and phone numbers. I'm asking you to invite them here, and I can't even get them to do that. And that's, and that's the, the, the competitive mindset that I don't think is helpful for trying to do what we're doing. That's the opposite my, of community. Yeah, my goal, my mm -hmm. goal is to work with every one of these businesses, even ones that are doing better than me. And, you know, if you're doing better than me, maybe you're thinking I'm trying to leech off you. Well, that's that's a that's a cannibalistic mindset, and that's not achieving the goal. Look, if I'm doing better, you're doing better. Yep. You yep. know, you know I'm, not, I'm not trying to be king of downtown. I just want this place to, to succeed. And you're not trying to ride anybody's coattails. You're just yeah. trying to build. Yeah, nobody's doing what we're doing. <laughs> right. And just... I'm not trying to do what anyone else is doing. It's a hey, it's a hey neighbor thing. Yeah. That's all mm -hmm. it is. So, so I, you know, I would like to see more of that. But yeah, if you have, if you're watching this and you haven't been here yet, stop wasting your time. Get down here and support the rooster. <laughs> and um, I'll, I'm going to leave the rest of this to you. Uh, you know, I've kind of asked you everything I wanted to ask. I've gotten the information I don't want. What do you want to tell our audience? And uh, I guess this would be the opportunity to campaign for a second because <laughs> we're not a political show. We we don't, you know. And and you know, when when I when I asked you to come on here, I was very adamant. I don't want this to be a political thing. Because um, you are, more, more than anything, you're a community advocate. 
You know, even which you know what that brings up a good question. This this will sure. be my last. This is kind of a hardball <laughs> sure. question, but um, you know, a couple of years ago you ran for state house. I did. Now, what would you say to a person that say, well, well, you're just out trying to have a political career. You know, what do you say to that critique? So, you know, I would say that we all make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> and I allowed, you know, I allowed some some folks to to uh, kind of lead me into running for a particular office that I had I really taken more time to think about. It's not really where my gifts or talents lie. You know, I, I enjoy the more intimate um, community of so a So you were gassed a up a little bit? Right. I, I, you know, I, I, I really felt that I was doing the right thing at the, at the time. Um, but hindsight is twenty twenty, mm -hmm. and I there's so much to be done in Gastonia, and there's so many things that we can all work together on, and that's where I live, you know. And, and don't get me wrong, you know, anybody who runs for the state house or even for um, national level politics, I mean, they're still in their community, you know, they, they come home and they're still here. Some of them. But they, yeah, but it, it's not the same as actually living here full time and engaging with the public here full time. And there's a lot more accountability on the local level. I mean, I, I know some people might differ, say it's not, but you run into people at the grocery store or if you're walking downtown or you're at the post office or wherever you might be, you cannot get away from the people you serve not that you would want to but that helps to keep you keeps you honest it does it keeps you honest well those state and national guys they're hanging out at the country club they're not you know they got somebody <laughs> yeah. else going to a good store for them they're not walking no. out walking the beat <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so I, long story short I, I had some i had some folks ask me and try to encourage me to run for that office i did it um and, and i did it for the right reasons at the time but i'm i'm really glad i lost I know what did so. you take? Like, what did you learn from that experience? Uh, um, I learned that I am more comfortable on the local level, and that my talents are here in Gastonia. I feel um, that I've been asked. I've been asked a handful of times by people, "Why don't you run for right. office?" And I'm that's. I laugh when people say that. I'm like, "Are you've got to be kidding me?" First of all, I'm not putting a fucking suit on. So there. <laughs> And you have to have dress shoes and a, yeah. a tie and yeah. I just I don't I'm not good at politics. I was never good at office politics. I'm too honest. Like I can't I can't pretend to like somebody. I'm not good at that at all. No. I can't pretend to to I can't sit there and listen to some bullshit and not say that's bullshit. <laughs> I, and you can't do that in those settings. Like it, it's you, you know I'm too confrontational I guess in those settings. You know and you know. Truth be told, I don't want the ridicule. I don't want the scrutiny of, be, of, of being that pop. I mean, this is, I've said many times, like it's taken me over two years to get comfortable doing this show yeah. and being the face. I'm fine with that. I don't want more than that, right? Like I don't need, you know, we all got skeletons in our closet. Last thing I want is for my daughter in middle school to have to read about some bullshit I did when I was a kid oh, in the paper. Yeah. You know, like I don't... <laughs> I, I, I don't that's want the that. world we live in today. That yeah. that stuff happens. Right. I mean, you, yeah, I mean, you some dumb shit yeah. I posted in 2008 on yep. MySpace somehow resurfaces, you know, <laughs> you know. Or on the other end, if your your middle schooler decides to post something and you're like, "Why did you do that?" You <laughs> get backlash from that yeah. standpoint. Right. It is it is unfortunate and regrettable that we're we have this like <clears throat> we're living in a time where like there's no. Like there's no like um, benefit of the doubt. Like like benefit of the doubt is being taken away from everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, one fuck up and you're done. Like that's that's yeah. kind of where we're at now with the with with the access to everything that we have with with the internet and social media. And you know, look, man, people learn from their mistakes. Anybody that says people don't change can eat my ass because <laughs> I changed. I changed big time. I was a very very different person 20 years ago than I am now. Yeah. You know. Yep. Yeah, and we're yeah, quick yeah. to put we're quick to put labels on people mm -hmm. and put people in boxes. Yeah. And it's harder and harder to escape those labels and to get out of those boxes. Yeah. And we're really damaging people by not allowing them to be human and to to have forgiveness 
and grace and mercy there's because a difference we between all a, have a past. Well, yeah, there's a difference between making a mistake and a pattern of yeah, behavior. Yeah, absolutely. Those are two different things. Absolutely. Uh, I, I agree. A pattern of behavior proves that this person has yep. a tendency. But to take something that somebody did one time and crucify them for it mm -hmm. is insane. Yep. Or in their 20s. You're setting a standard I mean, that's impossible to reach. And what it's yep. done is it's created an environment where the worst people get the most power right. because they're the only ones willing, you know, they're the only ones willing to, to even go for those kind of jobs because they don't care. Like mm -hmm. I, I care too much about this community of mine, my family. I, I care too much about my my mental health to catapult myself into into that arena. So now you're left with the worst of the worst to mm -hmm. choose from. And every, every four years, oh, the worst of two <laughs> evil, less of two. Well, that's because of you. That, yeah. Like you've created that environment. Right. You know, you, you're unforgiving despite all your flaws. And now this is what you have. So remember that when the election time comes around. So yep. you want to end the show with your, I'll give you 60 <laughs> seconds. Moderator, you got the clock? You got 60 seconds. <clears throat> so it, What's your pitch? It's, uh, it's really about community. I mean, it is about community. We are, we are so fragmented and so divided, especially since the end of COVID, that we have work to do. And there's no elected official in Gastonia or Gaston County or in our state that's going to have all the answers, but I think the answers come from all of us coming together, putting aside our differences and just trying to make this place better. And I hope that I'll have the opportunity to facilitate that and to lead that charge. Um, but really the, the answers are not specifically in government, but it's in what we all can do together in a partnership. Awesome. Any of Robert's friends that are watching this that are offended by my vulgarity, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> I have a potty mouth, <laughs> but but I swear I promise that all of this is done is done with good intentions and it's coming from the heart. Like I do care about this town. I care about this community. You know, th this community is where I grew up. I got out of it for a while, came back, and I'm here to stay. And the rooster's here to stay. So come support the rooster. Support Robert and his endeavors, and um, leave us comments. Let us know what we can do better. You know, I, I want to hear your opinion. Just don't be an asshole. Peace and love. <laughs>